Hi, welcome. My name is Dr. Marcy Stone, and I am going to be discussing Unit 4 of your course for Leading Organizational Change. So for your course layout, Unit 4 is on Talent Management and Facilitating Change. Here are your Unit 4 learning outcomes. Analyze how employees in a given organization can effectively contribute to a change process. Determine what a leader can do to impact change in a given scenario. Analyze the change management process from the employee perspective in a given situation. Analyze how to track follow through with employees in a given situation for better management. Why are learning outcomes important? Every learning outcome ties back to your course materials, to your study guide, to any test questions, and your content. So each of those are tied back, each of your learning objectives, <laughs> your learning outcomes are tied back to your assessments in this course. And then here are our overview topics for Unit 4. Analyze how employees contribute to the change process. What can a leader do to impact change? Analyze the change management process from the employee perspective, and then analyze how to track follow through with your employees. And here are the talent management vocabulary words and the definitions that we're going to be covering in this video. Now we're going to be looking at how about analyzing how employees make effective change? So some of the questions that we might ask and answer in this section are, what is an employee contribution for change? Can employees be responsible for unsuccess? How can you support employees through the change process and then how to lead employees through the change? So just some kind of think about as we go through this slide. So once employees understand the need for change and actively participate, they need to be supported by management. In addition, employee contribution may include training other employees on the change process. Employees may feel more comfortable understanding the new change expectations if another employee shows them how and explains why it is needed. And sometimes in change, you're going to notice some people will take to the change rather quickly and some people will want to help you with other employees and they, they may be the perfect people to train new employees. So leaders should observe which employees have made the necessary changes and understand the process. And those are the employees that the leader can focus on to train the other employees. This may result in employees leading the change. By supporting employees during the change process, a leader can better enact necessary changes and then gain support of all employees in the process. Determine what a leader can do to impact change. So some of the questions we might ask in this section is how does a leader impact change? Why do you need to support employees through the change? And then how to handle those employees who resist change? So good leaders can facilitate change in a variety of ways. By understanding what changes are needed, ensuring that employees are being trained properly, and encouraging employees to help each other through the process, a leader has a better chance of experiencing effective change management. Employees who fight the change or do not want to change should be handled immediately so that other employees do not follow their same behavior. A leader can facilitate change by checking in with employees regularly and ensuring that those changes are being properly made. If an employee demonstrates behavior that's not conducive to change, then the leader must meet with the employee to determine what the problem is and how it might be fixed. If the behavior continues after a few meetings, then it is time to use a performance improvement plan with that employee. An an in <laughs> uh, a performance improvement plan is actually quite detailed. So you would sit down with the employee, discuss what the behavior or attitude is that you would like to have changed 
and then what they need to do to actually change that. And it can be used, I think sometimes um, employees see it as a very negative thing, but if the leader handles it in a positive way to say, you know, we just want to discuss this issue with you, we're seeing some problems here, and we want to just figure out a way that we can positively change it in a way that's going to work for us and for you. So if you present it in that light, then it may not be as negative to the employee. Another quote, so people love change, they just don't like transitions, <laughs> which is kind of interesting because the transitions are how what how we make change and how we get there. So kind of a, a funny little one. Okay, so now we have analyzed the change management process from the employee perspective. So what is perspective? Why should you try to see something from an employee's perspective? And then how can you determine uh, what the employee perspective is? Perspective is an interesting thing, actually. So, so what is, um, interestingly enough, if 10 people witness a car accident, do they all see the same thing? No. Uh, the police have said that eyewitness accounts are very unreliable. And you might ask yourself, like, how is that even possible? If everybody's viewing the same accident from their own perspective, how can they not see the same thing? So while one person might be focusing on watching people across the street at the intersection, someone else might be talking on their phone, someone else might be arguing with the person next to them. Meanwhile, no one is focused on the car accident until it actually happens. And then you end up with 10 different stories. So perspective is interesting because we each have our own perspective um, of a situation. In addition to that, we also bring our own background, our own emotions, our own assumptions with us to where that one car accident might occur um, in addition to everything else that's going on around us and we're going to see something. Um, trying to understand someone else's perspective can be a tricky thing. Employees may automatically resist change because change at that company in the past did not go well, or maybe um, they don't like the people that they're working with and they don't want to collaborate, or maybe they just had a bad morning at home and they don't want to be agreeable. So there's so many different reasons why employees might resist change. As a leader, it's going to be your responsibility to speak to each of those team members, get their perspective about the change, why they might resist, and then decide what you're going to do about it. So a leader needs to understand why some employees take to the change quickly and others do not. Understanding the change process from their perspective is going to be important to create effective change. So this is true not only for employees who are helping to lead the change, but perhaps more importantly, for those that are resistant to change. You can try to gain their perspective on the change by speaking directly to the employees about the change process and what their resistance is. So for example, you may ask them to clarify the need for the change to ensure that they understand why the change is necessary. Or you may ask an employee who is resistant to change how they view the change process and what they believe the end result will be. By asking probing questions, you can better understand the employee's perspective. Depending on the response, you may need to conduct additional training or give all employees a better understanding of the process. So analyze how to track follow through with employees. Why do you need to follow through with employees? What will happen if you do not follow through and then tracking those changes with the employees? Just a few things to consider as we go through this section. So following through with your team and any employee that's involved in the change process is important. This may be conducted in one-on-one -on -one meetings or team meetings or casual meetings where you run into somebody in the hallway. So asking follow-up questions will be important to ensure a general understanding of the change process. While it may be true that employees will make the needed changes, leaders will supervise that change and ensure that it's conducted correctly. Employee follow-through is important during this time. So tracking change follow-through can be conducted in a variety of ways. You may keep an electronic spreadsheet of the changes and then progress. 
Um, this can also be done with handwritten notes or an electronic file um, that everybody in the team adds to. So you can save something maybe if you use Outlook. There's ways to save files that people can access and add their own changes to as they update date their part of the changes. Um, let's see, as a leader, you should review this process regularly and if necessary, ask follow-up questions if something is unclear. Um, if you supervise, maybe you supervise 10 managers and then each of those managers has, I don't know, let's say 50 to 100 people that work for them. So if you supervise the 10 managers, you may want to keep your own spreadsheet of everything that you discuss every week, what they're saying is being done, um, and then anything that you double check just to make sure that it's happening or running reports, that kind of thing can also help you to track follow through. Okay, so in conclusion for unit four, um, we took a look at how employees in a given organization effectively contribute to the change process. We looked at what a leader can do to impact change in a given scenario, and then we analyzed the change management process from the employee perspective in a given situation. So we also looked at tracking follow through with employees in a given situation for better management. And then next on the list is unit five, and it's recognizing what changes need to be made. Thank you.